Good morning. So, I'm so happy to be here, and I would like to talk to you today about something that we call the Regreen Revolution. This is a super ambitious decade plan to restore ecosystems across our planet, and especially in our case, in Africa, in the coming 10 years. Um, Just Dig It is all about positivity, but also about urgency. If you look at climate change, we have the next 10 years to really make a difference, and we need all of you, all the corporates, all the universities, the United Nations, every individual on this planet to support that cause. But before I get into that, maybe a little background on how I got into um, being part of this Regreen Revolution. So I studied marketing and communication. The purpose part came later. Um, and during my studies, I wanted to go out a lot, like students like to do. I know it's a bit harder now, but... So in order to get a lot of free tickets for electronic dance music events, I decided to start my own promotional company and do promotion for larger festivals, for club venues and stuff like that. So I organized that with the flyers and the posters, and it sounds more fun than it is, because it also means you have to be at the door at five o'clock in the morning, handing out posters to people who are just, well, not into that at that moment. So um, at one point, I was finding myself at 5.30 in the morning at one of the most iconic venues in Amsterdam, and this guy came up to me and he said, um, look, I see how you're doing this, and I think that's really um, more professional than the people that we have been working with. So would you be interested to come to our office to talk about a job in marketing? So I said, cool, who are you? And it turned out he was actually the boss of this event. Um, probably some of you know this. So I headed over there, um, started working in marketing during my studies, and uh, really had yeah one of the best times. It's all about hedonism, having fun, having a good time, traveling the world. But it really brought me on a path, um, because during this time when I was at this company, I also met Dennis, and Dennis is the co-founder of Dance for Life. And he came to me with a piece of paper that really said, um, Wessel, we're going to do something big, it's going to be positive, it's going to be inspirational, Bono has to join, um, Tiesto has to join, all the companies have to join, and you have to join. And that turned out to be Dance for Life. So during my time at Dance for Life, um, I had eight years. We went from that paper to just um, being active in 33 countries. Uh, at the peak, we had 1.5 million kids going through our educational program. Uh, all of them were educated about HIV and AIDS, but um, uh, most of them uh, really got uh, excited about the fact that they were rewarded with an event as a closure of Dance for Life. So at the peak, we had events in Gelderdome, in Arnhem, uh, in, in Indonesia, in Russia, in African countries. And um, yeah, all of these kids Dance for Life. So why am I telling you this? Because it brought me to the story what I really want to talk to you about today. That if you use positive storytelling and communication for a noble cause, then you can actually create a movement and create change. And if you look at one topic that's really important, it's climate change. So we have to make sure that we are all in this together, and that if we want to restore our planet, um, we have to do it now. So if you look at our planet, we have 70% water, um, 30% land, and of the land, 50% is degraded. So we need to make sure that we act as one people to restore climate change. Now, Just Dig It has been doing this for the last 10 years. We started out in Kenya, with this one, a shovel, and um, together with the local Maasai communities, we were digging buns, which are semi, um, like earth smiles, I like to call them, which looks like this. And we say, if you can warm up the earth, we can also cool it down. So looking at the earth smiles, it's vegetation. So in many of the countries that we work, the top layer of the soil is so hard that even if it rains, the rainwater is not able to infiltrate into the soil. Um, so by digging and opening up the top layer of the soil, you allow rainwater to seep into the soil. And nature-based um, solutions can contribute to 37% of the solution to climate change. And in doing so, also positively impact um, water, food scarcity, migration, and biodiversity. So it's basically the holy grail of all of the problems that we are facing. So we started in Kenya, and we have already dug um, 120,000 earth mouths, and that looks a bit like this. So we come to the area, and it's completely dry. Um, the grasses are dry, the trees are dry, and then we do the digging together with local communities. And um, you will see during the rains, the water will infiltrate into the soils, um, but exactly in the uh, puts that we have, in, in the pits that we have dug. So this is sort of the normal regreening taking place, but really now you can see that the vegetation comes up. 
it sprouts out, and because there's so much more water available in the system, it will spread out to the whole ecosystem. And then when you're back in the dry period, you can see that actually with a shovel, you can turn around a complete ecosystem within the course of one year. So that's a super powerful tool to regreen degraded landscapes. And what it does, um, it, it actually impacts the livelihoods of people. It impacts um, biodiversity, but it also improves their livelihoods because people did use this area anymore because it was so severely degraded. Um, now, 120,000 Earth miles is, is cool, um, but the technique that's probably even more scalable is uh, one more thing I want to show you is this. These are 6,000 of the Earth miles. Uh, it's a corny term, but they make the Earth smile, so that's why we chose it. You can imagine what 120,000 looks like. And uh, this is our Kenyan project, but the project I would like to talk to you about even more is our Tanzanian project, which is uh, even more scalable and really also depends on communication and positive storytelling to spread the message. So in Tanzania, we use a technique called Kiziki Hai, uh, or in English, we call it farmer-managed natural regeneration. I prefer the Swahili term, Kiziki Hai. And basically what you have to understand is that there are hundreds of millions of trees that are being cut down in sub-Saharan Africa for firewood, for timber, for charcoal, or different purposes, but often like this. So the root structure of the trees are still in the soil. So a hundred sprouts will probably grow out of this root structure. So if you learn farmers to cut down like 97 of these sprouts, uh, all the energy from the root structure will be channeled upwards and the tree can go back into a full-blown tree within the course of three to five years. So this technique is so simple that you do not need to have a whole training of trainers and stuff like that. Uh, it's just techniques that every farmer can learn. And what's the upside for the farmer? It's agroforestry, so if you have um, uh, trees on your farm, it will increase soil fertility, um, it will increase crop yields, it will have water retention, you will have shade on your farm, It'll, it, it improves livelihoods, basically. <coughs> so we did do this in Tanzania, and um, so we trained farmers in each village where we work, and again, these are very rural villages, and the idea was that people would go to their uh, villages after having been trained, and then spread the word. But that worked to some extent, because uh, people are just busy surviving, and these people were not seen in their communities. So what we came up with, together with our partner, is a movie roadshow. And this movie roadshow is a documentary about this technique, but also a really funny documentary featuring comedians, um, featuring, you know, beautiful drone shots. No actors, just people from their communities. And um, basically, uh, it's a documentary that shows the upside potential for the farmers if they start practicing this technique. <coughs> and we tour across all of the villages in the region that we work in. It's an area the size of the Netherlands. And we have a whole day of drama, of singing, of workshops. And then when the sun goes down, we show the documentary. And on average, uh, before, maybe less than 10% of the farmers would adapt the technique. But by seeing the movie and by seeing the people in their, in their communities, almost half of the people in the village will start adapting these techniques. And there you feel that something's happening empowered by communication, because if half a village has a greener farm and more crop yields, you can imagine that the rest of the farm of the village will also go and say, hey, I want that too. So they are training themselves. So this technique is super scalable, and in the last three years, because we've only been doing it for three years, we have regenerated five million trees. And this, again, this tree used to be, uh, uh, yeah, a little cut down tree um, in itself. And here you see the scalability of this approach, because Again, we do it in Tanzania, but this in sub-Saharan Africa, there are so many farmers, an estimated 350 million. So what if we are able to work together and reach those 350 million farmers using simple techniques, low-tech techniques, and you know, use communication, mobile technology, because even people don't think so. Many of the farmers even have a phone, even if it's an old Nokia with the dial pad, they get paid through their phone. So there's a direct communication possibility with these farmers. Um, so, our mission now, for the coming 10 years, it's the Decade on Ecosystem Restoration by the United Nations. And really, what we want to do is to work together with media houses. We have partnerships with some of the biggest media houses in the world, with influencer marketing, with mobile technology, with movies, uh, with every kind of form of, of, of communication that's possible. And our ultimate dream is to not go as an NGO from one program to the other, but really to see, can we establish one-on-one um, -on -one relationships with all of these farmers? And the techniques, again, are so simple that 
they see the upside potential themselves. And um, in the coming 10 years, we want to experiment with that uh, and see how we can roll that out. But we have already been working with um, uh, these kind of techniques. So we did a radio show, which had over 300,000 listeners. We used billboards, we used television, but also really rural marketing, posters, flyers, movie roadshows. So can you imagine that in the coming 10 years, we are able to reach these, these farmers and inspire and activate them to do it themselves? It would cost a fraction of what it would cost if you did it from program to program, and it would mean, within the 10 years, you could potentially scale beyond control. So that's the re-green revolution, and that's really what we hope to achieve in the coming 10 years, but it is going to require all of us. So I hope that you take this invitation to be part of the re-green revolution and pick up the shovel. Thank you. <laughs>